Hey everyone, welcome to Politics 2.0. So guys, I was going to start off with a series on making sense of the turmoil in the Middle East. Then I realized, in order to explain almost every issue in the Middle East, from the Syrian crisis, the conflict in Iraq, the Kurdish issue, to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, we have to visit one fateful event that happened over a hundred years ago called the Sykes-Picot Agreement of 1916. So back in 1916, the Middle East was quite different from what it is now. The modern countries of Iraq, Syria, the Turkish Republic, Republic, Jordan, Lebanon, Israel, Palestine, Yemen, Saudi Arabia, etc. did not exist. This region was part of the Ottoman Empire, which at the time was fighting the allied powers of the British Empire, France and the Russian Empire in World War I. The region that is now Iraq was made up of the Ottoman vilayets or provinces of Basra, Baghdad and Mosul. Syria, for example, comprised of large parts of the vilayets of Aleppo, Damascus, Beirut and the district of Zor. The region was home to a multi-ethnic, lingual and religious population consisting of Sunni and Shia Arabs, Kurds, Alawites, Druze, Yazidis, Assyrians, Armenians, I mean Armenians, Orthodox Christians, Maronites, Turkmen, Jews, well, you get it, many different cultures. But that was all about to change. In May 1916, in secrecy, unknown to the outside world, British diplomat Mark Sykes and his French counterpart Francois Picot devised a plan on how to share the Ottoman territory amongst the British and the French once they defeat the Ottoman Empire. This means they signed the agreement three years before actually winning the war in 1919. Man, talk about confidence. So they literally took out a ruler and drew this line on the map. Look how straight that line is, gosh dang it. The French would rule directly over the blue area and Zone A would remain under their protection. The British would have direct control over the red area where there were large deposits of oil. Zone B would be placed under British protection, just perfect for them to build a faster pathway to India from the Mediterranean. Sorry India. So does this mean the British and the French carefully considered the long-term impacts of these new borders on the people who are now forced to live within them? No, no. This is how Mark Sykes described the plan. I should like to draw a line from the Ian Acre to the last Kane Kirkuk. Wow. Mark, where did you learn to draw maps from? Sesame Street? On the map, sir! On this very map! I knew it! But right about the same time, the British were playing a double game. They had persuaded the Arab tribes in the region under the leadership of Sheriff Hussein of Mecca to revolt against their Ottoman rulers in return for an independent Arab homeland spanning from modern Syria to Yemen. The Arabs were obviously not aware of the Sykes-Picot agreement which had already determined what was to become of their Arab homeland. Spoiler alert, that's basically the entire plot of the movie, Lawrence of Arabia. T.E. Lawrence was a young British officer who played a decisive role in persuading the Arabs to take up arms against the Ottomans. In the movie, Lawrence can be seen uniting various Arab tribes and mobilizing them into battle with the Ottomans. The Arab tribes managed to capture various Ottoman cities like Aleppo, Damascus, Medina um, Aqaba. and Aqaba. Thank you, Lawrence. Great movie, you guys. However, the Arabs eventually found out. In the scene, Prince Faisal, Sheriff Hussein's son, confronts the British about it. But the British were like, ha ha, Sykes, Pico. I told you, sir, no such treaty exists. Yes, General, you have lied most bravely, but not convincingly. If we've told lies, you've told half lies. And a man who tells lies, like me, merely hides the truth. But a man who tells half lies has forgotten where he put it. Oh, wait, what? Eventually, it wasn't all that bad for Sheriff Hussein and his family, the Hashemites. If we juxtapose the Sykes-Picot map with the map of modern Middle East, it looks a bit different. This is because the Sykes-Picot was not implemented in its original form. There were multiple further treaties and negotiations that modified the Sykes-Picot like the San Remo Agreement in 1920 and the Treaty of Lausanne in 1923, eventually creating the modern Middle East as we know it. Faisal was made the king of the new country of Iraq, formed by the unification of the British possessions in Mesopotamia and his brother Abdullah became the Emir of Jordan. Jordan still remains the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan to this day. But in this video, we are not going to discuss the creation of every modern Middle Eastern country like Israel or Lebanon. That will be covered in the future videos where necessary. 
These arbitrary new borders also meant that ethnicities like the Kurds, who made up a large population of the Middle East, ended up stateless. The main takeaway is that the selfish and callous partitioning of the Middle East meant that people belonging to different ethnicities and religions were forced to live side by side in new countries such as Iraq and Syria that were created out of colonial whims. In Iraq, for example, this entailed Sunni and Shia Arabs, Kurds, Assyrians, Turkmen, Yazidis, etc. all had to somehow coexist immediately. Iraq has since witnessed numerous incidents of violence between the government and the various ethnicities. The most notorious being Saddam Hussein's genocidal Al Anfal campaign against the Kurds that led to the loss of a hundred thousand lives. The Sykes-Picot Agreement cannot of course be seen as the sole reason for the current conflict in the Middle East, but the way the Arab Spring in Syria escalated into a sectarian war between the Alawite Sunni Arabs and the Kurds, backed by foreign powers, can be seen as an example of its legacy. Now that you have the background, let's now jump straight into the current issues facing the Middle East. See you in the next video. Peace.